Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite website that I know you have bookmarked thelandgeek.com and this week i have your favorite guest my probably least favorite guest because he's always giving me trouble Duran Frazier from reserveland.com ruralpropertyfinder.com and probably he just registered another domain that will forward to ruralpropertyfinder.com Duran Frazier I know you're yes. not surfing. Are you in a good mood? How are you, buddy? I'm in a great. I'm in a great mood. Thanks, Mark. I actually am on a roll right now. I think four, make it five days straight of surfing every morning. The surf here has been unbelievable. Again, I know the guests probably could care less about surfing, but I just want to let you guys know that the water temperature is around 69, 70 degrees. There's big black nettle jellyfish in the water. These things are two feet wide by whatever. I mean, it's a big circle black. It's like a black purple blob. And right. I think these tentacles, they, the tentacles get 30 feet long. And, and yesterday I was sitting in the water and I was talking to this guy. I said, man, you got to watch out for these things. They're, they're kind of floating around. They're more down south, but there's a couple here. And as I said that, I kid you not, I look over and this thing is like six feet from me. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Do they, do they sting you? Oh, my gosh. It's, just, it's nasty. Nasty. How big are the waves? Uh, waves were like head high overhead. So like maybe five or six feet. You're crazy. So pretty, pretty small. So, so the point of this is that. If you learn to buy and sell raw land for profit, you can live like Duran Frazier on the beach and surf all week and still get paid. Is that, is that really the moral of the story of, of your life? That's quite accurate, Mark. But I, the, the interesting part is, and if you all want to know why Mark lives in Scottsdale, is because Mark's wife won't let him leave. Um, for me, I— It's, uh, it's my, the schools. It's not schools. It has nothing to do California's with— California is going out of business. There are great schools here for Polish kids in San Diego, and your children. Cool. You're from Pol- aren't you from Poland? I'm <laughs> Russian. It's with a Y, not an I. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Mark. That's Pravda. Uh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, it's there are some great schools here in San Diego, but but you know what? It, to each his own. Mark doesn't come out of San Diego because the weather's still beautiful in Scottsdale, and uh, it's not a big deal. But hey, Scottsdale's a beautiful place. Yeah, I, I got to get out of here for the summer. I should just live in your mansion for a few weeks. Bring the kids. Your, yeah. your, your wife wouldn't care. No, no, no. Crashed. We got 16,000 square feet now. I just built on another addition on the West Wing, so you should be good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So to this week, we want to talk about building your work environment for maximum productivity. So what do I mean by that, Duran? Just putting yourself mentally in a place where you work the most efficient. Right, right. So... Here, here's a good example. Like this is what I do in the morning. I I tweak my environment so that the things that I want out of my life kind of get done. So I've got bad knees, and I take like this joint uh, vitamin, and I always used to forget my vitamins. So I tweak my environment, and so right after I brush my teeth, I'm looking right at the vitamin bottle in the bathroom, and that's like my ding. Okay. Remember to take my vitamin because before I would, I have like an alarm set on my iPhone. Remember to take your vitamin in the morning and at night. And even then I would like forget. So now I have like in my environment, I brush my teeth twice a day, right after I brush my teeth, take the vitamin. So that's like an example. Another thing, you know, we were talking about eating clean. Like I'm sure your wife doesn't buy, you know, junk food for the house, right? Yeah, we are very uh, health conscious in many ways. We shop organic as much as possible. We also know that organic can be a bit of a scam as well. It's a, uh, it's it's a bit. Uh, what's the word? Sensationalized a bit in the media and everything else. But but I think at the end of the day, if you're focused on eating, uh, you know, refraining from as many pesticides as possible, keeping a healthy diet. I'm gluten free and dairy free. I cheat a lot. Um, not a lot, but I cheat. Um, but it. I'll tell you right now, it's been great for my weight and for my health. Um, mentally, the clarity that I have is unbelievable. 
Right, right. But see, but you, but the only way that you're going to stay gluten free is if there's not gluten in the house, right? So uh, when you shop, you shouldn't correct, have gluten. Correct, correct. We do our best, and and it's tough because we have two little kids that that literally thrive off of gluten. So um, <laughs> it's really difficult when you have a five and a three year old that are uh, you know looking for any piece of bread and carbs they can get. So right, okay. So if we if we extrapolate this out from our personal life to our work life, what kinds of things can we do in our own work environment for maximum productivity and getting results? So what kinds of things do you do in your office to help you kind of focus on getting, you know, your whatever is like the most important thing done? I call them the wigs, the wildly important goals. You know, I think the the one thing that we have to address first is that everybody has a unique personality. Uh, you know, yours for is, me, yours is really unique. I'm mine is ex- <laughs> I'm very strange, and I I operate different than everybody else does. Um, but the way I operate is I I actually like noise. I like to be around noise because I can filter the noise. So I like when I when I'm out work. I, I, and I also love change. Meaning, I, you know, I used to. I remember when I had my Starbucks addiction. Um, by the way, I own StarbucksAddiction.com, which is pretty funny. Um, and I also, <laughs> of course, you do. Starbucks don't come after me. I also own StarbucksRehab.com, which I did a little blog for like two months. It was really funny. But anyways, that's many years ago. Um, but that's I always worked better uh, in different environments. I always worked better by going to a different Starbucks, by meeting new people or seeing new faces. I, I enjoyed that. So uh, not everyone's the same way, and I and I noticed that. But I do I do notice that. By being outside and meeting people and in an environment where you can say hi to somebody new, it, I, I always feel like it's, it's a good thing. If you're confined to an office space, and you know what I mean, the nine-to-five workers that are probably listening to us going, hey, gosh, I just wish I could get out and do that and you know, work for myself. Well, that, the idea is, and, and one, of the, one of the things that I always say is I do business based off relationships. And, right. I, build, and I build relationships uh, where I am, meaning I'm, if, I'm, if I'm out at a coffee store or something, I'm, I'm out uh, you know, meeting people, talking to people, because that's how, I, that's how I work best. Now, everybody works differently. Mark, I think you like that office. And sometimes- well, well, you, know, you know, it's so funny, though, but uh, I mean, we, we got to be honest here. Like, this can be lonely. I mean, we're in one man offices. Like I'm in an office, I see people, but I close my door. Like we're doing this podcast right now. I got to close my door. I'm not seeing anybody. So, you know, it you've got to kind of get out there and network with people, talk to people, bounce ideas off of people. You have to force yourself to do that in this business, right? That's right. Unless and, you're doing you got- it part time and yeah, you have another I- job. And I will mention a little trend, which is so funny because I'm, I'm actually uh, doing exactly what this little trend is doing. But I, I love the, the, the actual col- the like collaboration space, the creativity space, the, co- uh, the co-working spaces, which are now kind of blossoming everywhere around the country. And they're really cheap. So one of the things that I'm doing here in, here in uh, North County, San Diego, is, I'm, is I'm, I'm opening a new office by the beach. Uh, it's not a big office. It's 1,500 square feet. But I'm going to bring in. Uh, kind of a collaboration group of people that are mentors that help these startup companies with ideas, that kind of stuff. And we charge people a couple hundred bucks, two, three, four hundred bucks, five hundred bucks a month, depending on whether they want, you know, temporary desks, permanent office space. So, but having that sort of like that network, that group of people where you have 15, 20 people, you can always collaborate with, meet new people, and you're in an environment that's, that's, you know, everybody's working hard to achieve one goal, which is being successful. So, right. Right. So that that to me is is important. So you know, as you're looking out to do this stuff, and you know, whether you're you know 21 years old or you're 51 years old, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it, put yourself in an environment that's going to help you uh, prosper. So right, it's right, and you, got, and you have to kind of know what you like to do. Like I have the Spotify web player up in my browser, so when I'm doing something that's kind of, uh, I don't really need to think that hard. I like to listen to my music. I listen to my playlists. And it, it, it's more enjoyable to me. Put on the headset and, you know, listen to music. But another thing that I like to do with my environment, because I know myself, is be, be distraction-free. And the best 10 bucks I've ever spent, I, I, this is probably going to be my tip of the week, but I've got another one, so I'll throw it out now. It's this, uh, it's this online internet blocking tool called freedom.com. It's really popular with writers. Have you ever have you heard of this thing, freedom.com? Mm-mm. Yeah, it, it blocks the internet. So w- let's say I'm doing a promissory note, a land contract, and a purchase sale agreement, right? 
and I really need to focus on getting this out. Um, what I'll do is I'll go to freedom.com, I'll block the internet. So that way I, I'm changing my environment. So I'm not clicking around, I'm not checking blogs, uh, I'm not checking Facebook, Twitter, the news, LinkedIn. Um, Mark, Mark, can I interrupt one second? I don't sure. think it's I don't think it's freedom.com. I think it's something else. What is it? I don't know, but and I no, just... I'm sorry, it's it's uh, I'm at MacFreedom.com. Okay. M A C freedom.com. So it works okay. on both PC and Mac computers. Got it. Okay. Yeah, you're right. But the the the, the program's called Freedom. It's ten bucks. You get it, it. Try it for ninety days. It's a ninety day money back guarantee. But it, it's great. I mean, because I know myself. I've got. I literally have the attention span of a ferret on a double cappuccino. Like if if left to my own devices, I'll find a million other things to do because I'm so interested in learning new things. Whether I go to Feedly or you know, uh, some other type of news site that I like, I won't get my work done. I'll, I'll get distracted. So this, this little tool for 10 bucks keeps me on target and it changes my environment so I can stay focused. Do you do anything like that? Or are you more kind of disciplined on your own? And, you know, and I don't have to use up any of my willpower either because we only have so much willpower in a day too. Yeah. Mark, it's interesting you say that because I think for me, I, I should use a program like this, but I know I wouldn't. I would never do it. Uh, because the way my brain works, which is a little bit different than yours, is I'll get an idea within what I'm doing. Meaning, meaning I, we we're creating a new a new landing page for something, and I just came up with a domain name that I need to use. And if I if I don't, I usually don't write things down because it's not how I work. Right. Um, I will. I may I may type it down, but I don't write it down, and then I won't go back to it. Which again, we whether you're like I said, whether you're 21 or you're 50, 51 or you're 81, you know our our brains are always trying to figure out the most effective way to operate. And, and so I'm always learning, like I'm, you know, being 35, I'm sort of right in that, that, that area where I still have a lot to learn and I'm still trying to learn new stuff. So like, you know, the things you say, Mark, I mean, from what you've learned from 35, because I remember when you were 35 to what you've learned <laughs> I'm now. I'm so proud that you can remember that far back. Yeah. Uh, uh, to, to now, uh, it's crazy. I mean, I, and again, if you guys knew Mark, you know, seven years ago, you know, he was, you know, he was living under a bridge and I, when I came out and I... <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I came in and I helped him. I gave him food. I fed him. I clothed him. My baby, you know, everything. It was I did it, and I felt like so proud because look right. at what he's become. So, thank, uh, but thank you, know, you for saving me. <laughs> but you know, in, interestingly enough, I will say that you've come so far in, in on the education side of things, and I'm still. My, our, our brains are all, are all sponges. And, you know, we, you know, we talk about the whole, the whole sponge thing and how our brain wants to learn. Look at a two-year-old and how quick he adapts to an iPad. Now, right. look at an 80-year-old and how slow he or she adapts to an iPad. And I'll tell you why. Because at 80, the sponge is pretty darn full. You can't learn anymore. I mean, you can, but it's not something you can remember it's not, so it's really interesting as you think about the little two-year-old who's got this brain that's just it's so much space to memorize things and right. to learn. And, this, and, and an 80-year-old, who, and I'm not saying that 80-year-old people can't learn. It's just a different, you know, we're in a different, you're in a different time in your life where the, 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 the sponge is almost full. Like right. your, your brain is on overload. You've got, you know, it's, it's so it, it's really interesting and unique when I, you know, I look at like a child and an older person, like I'm trying to teach my grandfather who's 85 how to, how to work a computer and stop sending me forwards eight times a day. And then my, <laughs> and then my two-year-old who's a freaking whiz kid on a, actually he's three now, who's a whiz kid on a, on an iPad and on an iPhone. So it's just interesting. Yeah. So, uh, I wanted to share this with you. I'm, I'm moving, uh, to a new a new office uh august 15th it's gonna be a bigger office it's gonna be great and uh but you know what i did because i noticed like my last my last meeting that i had i had a walking meeting and it felt great so we walked around my office complex and just talked i feel like i think better when i'm walking talking um you know there's there's that i don't know like i don't like necessarily just sitting and talking like if I'm even taking a walk with my wife and talking, I feel like it's such a more it's such a more productive conversation than if we're just sitting like at a Starbucks talking. And um, so what did I do? I changed my environment. I bought a treadmill desk, which I'm really excited about. So yeah, I'm not going to walk fast, probably 1.2 miles per hour, but I'll be walking and working and typing, and it's just going to keep my 
my brain, I think, more focused on getting work done. Do you like that idea? I mean, I think there's been articles and like uh, things uh, online about how sitting is killing us. Yes, I I totally agree. I play basketball five to six days a week. I uh, surf five to six days a week. So I'm very active. And I believe, I, I truly believe that the more active we are, the better our brains operate and right. think. And, you know, I can, I can go surfing with my friends and I tell my wife I'm going to a board meeting um, because, in essence, my surfboard is a board meeting with my friends. So um, <laughs> it works very creatively like that, let me tell you, um, except when I come back in my board shorts and I'm soaking wet and, uh, and I smell like the ocean, then she realizes I didn't really go to a board meeting. Right. So, um, but, but she also realized that that's how I, that's, that's how I operate. So, right. Um, I mean, and, and there's a huge creative aspect to this business. Wouldn't you agree? 100%. As far as the marketing is concerned? Hundred percent. You know, it's funny. I I rarely say hundred percent. I'm just kidding. I think I say hundred percent at least eight times uh, podcast. But it's, I, a, it's I, a new drinking game we're gonna play. <laughs> yes, exactly. when, when I, okay, so this is the new game. When Duran says hundred percent, you have to drink, and when I say right, you have to drink. <laughs> and if we, we can get through a full podcast. And, and when we say um or we repeat a word, uh, you have to drink again. You have to drink again. <laughs> but you have to drink organic uh, almond milk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah. We we'll have to have a disclaimer at the end of this podcast. Please, no drinking games. Yes, yes. So, uh, but yes, I, yeah, like I said, market, market spot on. I mean, envir- from an environment aspect, you know, whether you're working in, a, in an office uh, that's, that's closed, make sure you get out. Make sure you're not sitting on your butt all day long. Get up and do things. Go, up, go out and meet people. Go out and help people. Because you know what? One, one thing too, you'll learn is, like yesterday I spent two hours helping a friend of mine um, just sat down with him and talked to him. Um, I love people. I love people. I love conversations. I love helping people. If I could be a full-time giver, I would. But unfortunately, I have to support my wife and kids. I mean, not unfortunately. I mean, I have to do what I have to do, and that's part of life. But, but, but at the same time, I get so much you know, emotionally, mentally, physically out of helping other people as well. So, but, but being out there in that environment and doing that for other people, it'll, I promise you it'll all come full circle. Right, right, which, which brings me to – my super productivity tip. And so many people, I think, when they wake up, they just start thinking about what they need to do for that day. And I think the first thing you should do is really take care of yourself first. First thing I do when I wake up is I work out. I get it out of the way. I feel great. Whatever I'm stressed out about, when you're, when you're stressed out, if you're working out, you can't feel that stress. It's a great stress reliever. Do you, do you schedule your workouts and what time do you uh, get up in the morning? I'm up about between five and six every day. Okay. Uh, maybe six thirty, And you know, my wife and I will rotate depending on how the kids were like, if I've got work, like last night I worked till about one o'clock in the morning. So my wife will let me sleep in till, you know, seven o'clock or something like that. But we, we rotate and, and as long as I'm getting, and remember too, folks that, that sleeping is a key aspect of your health. Yeah. Eight hours. Yeah. Eight, seven to eight hours minimum. And I, I've always been a great sleeper. People always go, Dren, how do you sleep? I talked to you in your free cat, you know, people, I remember when I was younger, people go, are you, are you on drugs? And I said, yeah, I'm high on life. If that's what you mean. <laughs> um, but, but no, I, I, I could always, because I'm always going in the daytime and I'm always thinking and Mark's the same way. He just doesn't have as much outward energy as I do. Um, we, we, we are, we are the kind of people that I'm sure Mark's the same way. I, the, the minute I hit my pillow, I'm gone. I am, yeah. I am two sheets to wind. I, you ain't waking me up. I'm gone. And so, and I, my wife would say, stop snoring about nine times at nighttime, but I, I enjoy it. So right. it's, it, it's key to get your good sleep. You know, like, you know, if, you, if you're going to stay up till 12 o'clock, you better know that the next day you're not waking up, you know, at, at six in the morning or five in the morning for something because it's just so unhealthy for the body. And that's what I think really keeps me like, I'm a, I'm a type A guy. I stress. I mean, that's, there's just no doubt about it. That's the way I operate. But I do, my rest really does help, and my exercise really does help. So All right, I'm going to change your I'm going to change your life right now. Oh, because this is what I do literally every day, even on the weekends. So you know, do you ever feel like a little lethargic around three o'clock? So if I'm, I'm assuming you're going to have lunch around twelve, twelve thirty one, maybe a little earlier, but I always feel a little tired around three. So I actually schedule on my calendar. Meditate. I meditate every day. For 10 minutes and I use a free program on my computer and it's actually a free uh, app called calm.com and I'm telling you after 10 minutes of just breathing I, and closing my eyes I have a new jolt of energy and 
it's great. It's like a it's it's like a free cup of coffee without that you know caffeine crash. Have you have you ever tried meditating? Uh, Mark, I don't know if you know my spiritual life at all, but I'll go ahead and, and give you a little detail. I I don't necessarily meditate. I do pray a lot. Um, okay. I, I think that, that's, that's I, the same thing, isn't it? You're, or right. No? Uh, you're right. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're, whether you're, you know, med- in a, I, I don't know if it's the same thing. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know exactly what you do when you meditate, but, but I do, I just, I'll, I'll close my, and I actually do it several times a day. Um, not, a, not in a, not in a schedule, but I just, you know, thank God for everything that's, that I've been blessed with my life and, and, uh, you know, do my best, uh, you know, to, to, you know, to, to pray for the things around me and what I'm working on. So yes, in essence, it's the same thing that you're doing. Right. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, gratitude is a huge thing, isn't it? Yep. Being grateful for what you have instead of looking yep. at what you don't have. Exactly. Exactly. So okay. I, to- I totally agree, Mark. This is definitely our most touchy feely of podcasts. Wouldn't yeah. you say? I, yeah, I'll probably start crying in about five minutes. If we don't end this thing. <laughs> yeah <laughs> we, we got some time left so you, you, you want to talk about how all this relates to land sure i mean uh, tips and tricks but this yeah. but i mean the thing is if you don't have this stuff in place you're gonna it's like it's like you're working inefficiently yeah and you and you also have to remember that that you have to work to get there, right? So you're not going to go, hey, guys, I'm quitting my job on Friday and Monday. I'm going to be a land buyer or, or, or a land seller, whatever. Whatever your plans are, like, it doesn't happen overnight. And you have to plan. You have to, you know, whether you're a person like me who is super ADD and all over the board most of the time um, right. that, that really needs to, fo- like, focus on focusing, um, or you're someone who's very rigid and structured and knows how to get these things done, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not going to happen overnight. It's got to, it's, it's going to happen in time. So you're going to do small, you, you know, whether you're writing it down on a computer or paper, you got to, you got to really, you know, set the goals to get where you want to be, which is living a life of, you know, there, look, Mark and I don't have perfect lives. We certainly have, we like, I, I love it. In fact, every day I go, gosh, I am so, I am so, but I have never, except for before I was 21 doing little restaurant stuff, I haven't worked for anybody for 14 years. Um, and be, to, to, to go back, I mean, I, I, if I ever think about that, I'd have to go work for somebody, it stresses me out. Like that would be the only stress I'd ever have to really deal, deal with. Um, but I, I, I am so happy that I have the ability to do this now and everybody can get there. Um, it's just a matter of number one, taking risks. Number two is setting goals. And number three is creating the agenda to, to, to get, you know, to achieve those goals. So right. don't, and don't, yeah, you've got, you've got to kind of know what you're doing first. And, yep. and get the education because that's going to give you the that spark or that motivation to take that next step. Because it's just don't you think it's just too scary? Like, oh, I'm just going to go buy a piece of land and yep. and sell it yep. without knowing how to do due diligence. Um, Tot- you know totally. what I mean? Totally. And I think that people need to, to realize that that we. Um, you know, it, we, we, we were, it was for us, it was sort of timing, right? Like people always say right place, right time. We literally got the market when, when it was so ripe for, for the internet, for selling that it was a little easier for Mark and I to really get a handle on everything. Yeah, but the tools weren't there that we have that's, today. That's, that's what I'm saying. So, so then we had to learn, we had to relearn everything because once eBay got saturated, because look, when Mark and I were buying land in Nevada and subdividing and you know, the con, the idea that, 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 you know, I, I brought. I, I like to say this. I brought Mark along with me when we bought, <laughs> when we bought Nevada land and subdivided it. Nobody was doing what we were doing. We we innovated the land game. So so then we had a lot of people following us, going in, cutting up land. Um, so it was really interesting. And and the dynamic was that that we 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 didn't we didn't necessarily know how to get to the next level after we figured that part out right after ebay was saturated we didn't know where to go like we were all in a bad position and the mat the market crashed and then we were like okay what's next how do right. we you know how do we how do we innovate how do we create these new ideas so um and that's where then we mark and i actually both and uh, you know i don't know if the listeners have heard this before but we both literally took a lot of time off to learn yeah. to really we had to, to re- really... we had to reinvent our businesses mm-hmm we, we so, definitely had to. I mean, we had to innovate. And uh, honestly, I think I think that economy was a blessing in disguise uh, for me and my business. I mean, it wasn't any fun going through it and and taking the income hit, but it forced me to go into different marketing channels, learn different uh, strategies to grow the business because necessity is the mother of invention, right? We had to do it. Yep. I mean, we, we, we basically start, you know, generally when people start a business, 
uh, they create a business plan. And, you know, I'm, I've never been a proponent of a business plan, but funny enough, now I mentor several startup companies and I force them to put a business plan together. So, you know, they have some structure and direction of where they're going. Um, but it's really interesting because if I look back, I go, you know, had I done a business plan, had I created an exit strategy, Mark and I probably could have walked away with 15 or 20 million bucks or more in the bank with our assets, right. no, knowing, hey, this is what our goal was. This, is my, this was our three to five year exit strategy. We, we didn't have that down because what we did is a, we had a fly by night. We just decided to get into this and we didn't really have an exit strategy or an idea as to how to get out. And now yeah. we look back and we go, gosh, you know, had we sold our portfolios in 06, we could have walked away with a lot of- I mean, You know money. what it was? We were missing that, that key piece. We were missing a mentor. Yep. There was no one doing what we we're doing. Yep. I mean, there's real estate guys out there, but I'm not paying $20,000 for a boot camp to learn how to buy you know, a house yep. that I'm not interested in maintaining and, and doing and flipping. So land is like this unique niche. We really didn't have a mentor. Now we're becoming that for other people and we can help people um, you know, get beyond where we were at in that same time period. Does that make sense? Yep. Totally. totally. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. How are we doing time-wise? I have no clue. You're asking the wrong I think, person. I think we're good. So <laughs> you want to talk about your, your tip of the week? Tip of the week. Uh, well, there's this new website that I'm working on. I'm totally joking, Mark. Um, I don't, are, you, are you not going to plug it again? Are you? <laughs> if, please, if you're listening to this podcast, please make sure Ann happy and go to ruralpropertyfinder.com. It's always his tip of the week. <laughs> Next week it'll be his tip of the week. Oh, it's not. It's not my tip of the week. You know what? My tip of the week is there's a website. We're talking about health and and you know working efficiently and and getting out and exercising and doing things the right way. There's a website that I love. I'm I am anti drugs, meaning anything. I haven't touched a I haven't touched a Tylenol in six years. That's how bad I am. Um, I go to a website called EarthClinic.com. EarthClinic.com. Earth Clinic has, if you've got a headache. I'm going there now. I'm if, you need a rem, if you need a natural remedy, that is a great place to go. Uh, it, you know, I, whether it's apple, you know, raw apple cider vinegar, which I do a lot of these weird things, turmeric, uh, which is an anti-inflammatory. A lot of these things that I do to kind of oh keep. Oh, my gosh. You, Are you kidding me? Home great. of complementary and alternative medicine. Yep. Folks, yeah. folks. Yeah, look, the mind is very strong, and this is a very expensive placebo effect but look if it works for duran wow wow yep it works. It works. Yeah, go ahead go to pfizer go get what you need guys go fix the problem that's actually not create that you're just creating a new one um yes i i uh t i don't know what mark's talking about but you but know as what i'm talking about there, this is not fda regulated stuff oh oh because the fda is so good right oh my gosh um, are we gonna argue about this no hold on let's just talk about this for a minute are you a <laughs> proponent of the fda Stop yeah, it. I'm a proponent of the FDA. Oh, stop. I'm a proponent of science. Oh, wow. You're I want science. You're in a my, sick in man. My, you know. You're a sick man. All yep. Right. Keep taking your vitamins for your for your knees that you hurt while you're playing shuffleboard, and, and you just keep doing what you do. Hey, look. I, look, I take one of those vitamins, and mentally I'm sure I think I am have less inflammation from my unregulated vitamin I take every morning. Wow. Wow. Okay, we, so we, earthclinic.com, folk medicine. Get your placebo, <laughs> get your expensive placebo effect here, and feel well, proud of it. What well, does this have to do with land? We're talking health today. We're not talking. We're not talking about, health. We're talking and, about being more productive. Give me a productivity exactly. tip. That, okay, productivity right. tip. I, one of one of my favorite sites, and and I don't know if you guys know this term, but we talked about co working and and uh, a couple of things uh, earlier. Um, there's a, there's a site that I like, and we, we've talked about in the past about crowdfunding and the crowd. Um, there's a site called dailycrowdsource.com. Dailycrowdsource.com. Um, I'm going there now. And it is basically, it has information about crowdsourcing, which it, it may be really confusing to some people, but it's basically like how to be efficient marketing with your time using the crowd. Oh, so, I see. Now this I like. So this, I, you know what? This is a great site. Yep. So I, I am actually, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm mentoring these guys. After so, I take my St. John's work from earthclinic.com, I'll come here and I'll go to dailycrowdsource.com and feel yeah. great about it. This is fantastic. Yeah, so this site, um, I, I'm the CEO and I are very, I've been mentoring him for about a year now. Um, he's doing very well. He's actually got, he's had two conferences, one in Los Angeles at USC and then one in New York City, which was about four months ago. And it 
absolutely. He charged tickets. I mean, the tickets for seventeen hundred bucks a piece, and people paid. I mean, the thing. I think the thing almost sold out. Um, and so it's a lot of big speakers. And just so you guys know, what's interesting too about this stuff is that like. Um, you know, the, the Walmarts of the world, the, you know, the, who else was there? I, he has, eBay was there. All these big companies are really trying to, to harness crowdsourcing and how they can utilize it in their brand because they know that their own marketing is stagnant. So again, this is a little bit more information they need, but I'm letting you guys know that how, how effective crowdsourcing is the new outsourcing. Um, so right. and, and we, we've talked about my favorite site, we go look.com to have someone to go look at your property for you for due diligence. Yeah. I, I, I love that service. Um, is that, is that, uh, the same cost for any property anywhere? You know, if they've got to really go out and it's really rural, I think it's like 79 bucks. Typically they might charge you a little bit more, okay. but I'll tell you what, it's a lot less, whatever they charge, it's a lot less than you going on a plane, having to get a hotel, get a rental car drive out for several hours of your time to look at property yourself. Well, let me explain. I just, I just paid, uh, 800 bucks uh -huh. for, I think about nine or 10 properties, okay. uh, to be shot. But they were, they were, some of them, like six of them were together. Two of them were together. Four of them were kind of close to each other. So I probably would have cost me the same amount of money if I did on this website, but I like in Elko, it was Don member Don from, uh, Don Mitten. Um, sure. Sure. It was Don's, uh, one of Don's agents. So, uh, but yeah, this kind of, that kind of stuff is huge. Okay, great. Well, this is a great tip. Okay. So, uh, what's my tip of the week? Okay. This is, you know what? I'm not going to have you go to a website. I'm actually going to have you do a weekend project or a week project because since we're doing this, like this touchy feely thing, and I feel really confident now giving this tip after earthclinic.com that Joanne wasn't afraid to give us a tip. He's not even smiling right now. Oh, he's shaking his head. You're really mad at me about this. I'm, you're pathetic. There's a reason why you weigh 120. Come on. And you're 5'11", 120, and you look first, like... First of all, I'm 6'1", 180. You're definitely not 6'1", 180. <laughs> washboard abs, baby. <laughs> washboard abs. All right, so this is the tip. And, Dran, I, I don't know if you've done this or not. It's going to sound a little hokey and a, and a little like... I don't know if you guys have heard of this book, The Secret... Um, like, you know, you, you just put something out there and it comes to you without having to do much. Okay. But this, I really believe in. So my wife and I are actually going to do that this weekend. I want everyone out there to go out and make a goal poster or a vision board. And I was reading this article on Forbes and just go out, get a, get some poster board and just cut out like big things that you want to have come into your life. I don't know if it's a luxury car. For me, that's going to be a Tesla. Uh, that's my next car for sure. That's going to go to my, on my vision board. Um, a house, whether it's you know funding your children's education, which would be great for Duran. Can I, can I interrupt you real quick? Can I interrupt? Yeah. You're, you make me want to vomit right now, Mark. You know why? Why? I'll, t I'll tell you something. You know what, guys? First of all, a vision of a Tesla makes me sick. You know what, guys? Have a vision of a big smiley face and that smiley face be you and that be you because you're just content and happy with what you freaking have. Not because you want a Tesla, not because you want a big house, but because you're just happy that, with the okay, what I, I, okay, look, you with. I you know, agree. Not, I, I agree. So, stuff is not going to make you happy. I agree. But if you have these goals, okay, it doesn't have to be a car or a house. Have some goals out there. Maybe it's that you're going to quit your job in 18 months. And you're going to be the CEO of your own company. I don't know what it's going to be. Maybe uh, you're single and you want to meet the perfect person in your life. But, but I, I want you to actually have these goals. Put, I don't care what they are. They don't have to be my goals. I want a Tesla, Duran. I'm not ashamed to say it. It's great. It's a cool car. And, uh, you know, happiness is a whole different thing. But put these things on a goal poster or a vision board. So I'm reading this woman in Forbes, Amy Rees Anderson. She did, she did this, and she realized, oh, wait, all my goals that I put on my, on my goal board came true. What did she put on there? Well, she ended up taking her company public, and she sold it for $377 million. She started a foundation, uh, a charity that's focused on empowering entrepreneurs, so I and guess she, she's she, and she she's won competing the, and with you. She won, and she won the lottery. She did not win the lottery, but she did sell her company for $377 million. Same thing. And uh, look, 
try it. Try I'm, it. I am. It, I am. Look, I think our brains are like a GPS system. Okay, you plug into the GPS system, and it and it gets you there. If you don't plug anything in, you're just going to drive around aimlessly. Your brain needs a goal. It doesn't have to be something. It's just it can just go into the unconscious. But, but consciously but, have these goals out there. But remember that goals, um, realistic goals. Now, I, I, I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of a, a real, Tesla's a realistic uh, goal. No, it's not, Mark. You are gonna be, you are never gonna make enough money to get a Tesla. So I think that for <laughs> you, I think. So you know what though? You're right. Okay, may, maybe a car like that. It, you know, to me, if you're going, hey, I want a Bentley or I want a. Right, fine. You maybe, know, okay, you know what I want to do? I'm gonna live on the beach and surf next to you. I'm gonna have a picture perfect. of a beach house. Perfect. Now, now I will tell you that that. For me, I the, with all those dreams and aspirations comes the headaches and trouble. And and I will tell you that that I've learned the hard way. I went from very wealthy at the age of 24, very wealthy, to losing a lot of money by the time I was 28 because the market crash and a lot of you know value and equity and what we had. Uh, so I learned I learned and, and I was going month to month where thirty thousand went in here. You know I was up sixty, down sixty, up a hundred, up down two hundred. You know I was I was like you know, uh, a, a poor version of Donald Trump. But at the same time, I made it happen. But I all, I remember that back in when I was 24, 25, 26, when I was like really young and dumb, my aspirations were always to have something big, a grand house, a big. And then I realized I had the big house. And then I realized it was a nightmare to clean up. I didn't want the big house. The cost of the house was a lot of money. And then I just realized, you know what I care about? I care about my health. I care about my, my time away that I can take my wife out on date night. To, to, uh, to, to spend time with my children. That to me, like if, like those are the things that I think that people should focus on. Put on the board, spend more time with my children. Put on your board, you know, go, 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 you know. You, get, are, you are preaching to the choir here. No, I I'm have, not. I, you are talking about I, no, 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 a I, I, Tesla. I can't believe you're yelling at me. House. My I podcast. Hold on a second now. <laughs> my podcast. All right, listen. I com- you're preaching to the choir. I completely agree with all everything you're saying. Okay. My point is, is that if you don't put it somewhere, you Got don't it. make it a goal, consciously or unconsciously, okay? First of all, to spend a lot of time with your children and surf takes money. You've got to make money. You've got to have some type of financial goal. It's, totally just, it's just reality. It's just a way of life. Yep. If you want to be healthier, then have a picture of you're perfect, you know, have a picture of somebody from, you know, a men's fitness magazine or a women's fitness magazine on the board so you can see what is possible to achieve. You have to at least see what's possible to achieve I out agree. there, okay? I so agree. that's all that's all I'm saying. I have be, one more goal. I have yeah, one more goal. What's your one goal? More goal. Right. My goal is meet three new people every single week. Great, and you can do that, but it's no. going to be nice if you can see it on your goal poster. But I'm not saying I know I'm not saying for me. I'm saying for the listeners. Right. Take make it a goal to introduce yourself to three people every week and ask them what they do and ask them how you can help them. Okay. Well, I think this was a good podcast. It was a little touchy feely. Wasn't so much related to land, but somehow we went from creating a good environment to be productive to Earth Clinic. It, it kind of devolved <laughs> at EarthClinic.com, and then. <laughs> Duran yelling at me because he doesn't like my goal poster. <laughs> but look, I, you know, if you want to learn more, obviously go to my website, thelandgeek.com. Subscribe on uh, iTunes to this podcast. Leave us a comment. Go to uh, thelandgeek.com slash product. Check out the Investor's Toolkit. It's a, it's a phenomenal way to get into this business has everything you need to learn from due diligence, deal flow, marketing, copywriting, managing managing your virtual assistant team. And, of course, if you want to buy some wholesale land, go to FrontierPropertiesUSA.com, throw a bone to Duran, go to ReserveLand.com, and especially if you're marketing land, we're going to know if you don't go there. Please go to RuralPropertyFinder.com. How much does it cost now to, to list a, a property? A single property is $9 a month. $9 a month. Just this podcast alone is worth $9. Exactly. And then and then monthly unlimited listings are $29.99. $29.99 for unlimited? Yeah, per month. That's that's very good deal. So we're we're uh, going to try some different um, 
techniques on uh, how we structure because uh, we're, we're adding packages to the Craigslist side and different things like that. So, All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for listening and uh, hope your day is more productive. Leave us a comment if you like this podcast. If you didn't like this podcast, it was a little bit different than what we normally do. Dran, any last words? Nope. Keep living the dream. Keep living the dream. All right, this is Mark Podolsky, the land geek from thelandgeek.com, saying make your week productive. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.